lots, believe it or not, can be beautiful gardens that serve an important purpose if you use low impact design concepts. And here to tell us more about this gorgeous parking lot is Carol Ashworth with Ashworth Environmental Design. Hi, Carol. Hey, Julie. Well, where are we? We are on the campus of the Richard H. Fulton Complex, which most people know as the Howard School campus. Well, I understand when they started doing all of these wonderful renovations for all these buildings that they decided to really set it up as a demonstration site for stormwater control. Around 2003, the mayor's agenda was to turn this into a very pedestrian-friendly green site. I met with Dodd Galbraith, who was with the agricultural department at that time, and we brainstormed some ideas of how we could handle the stormwater since there was nowhere on site to do detention for it. The site has a lot of design constraints in that it's, uh, it's very tight, it's very built out, and it's also one of the oldest areas in the city. So behind us, this limestone building was built in the 1850s. So underneath us, there's just a whole network of infrastructure that had to be worked around. Then I came back to the civil engineers who were a firm called SSOE and they took it and ran with it and made some very interesting, innovative methods for handling stormwater out here. All the stormwater is pitched to drain into the tree islands and be held so it can infiltrate. The, during a heavy storm event, what doesn't go into the islands flows into these bioswells during a really heavy storm event, then it would flow down into this lower basin and then it goes back into the stormwater system. And all of these devices help to filter and make the water quality better. So at the time, in 2003, there wasn't a lot of information, especially here in this part of the country, about low impact design. So in many ways, this was a real pioneer project for the city. The planning department uses it as a demonstration site. When a contractor comes in for a building permit, they um, show this as an example because in 2006, the stormwater department rewrote a section of their uh, ordinances to include low impact design methods. So what you see here is all permeable asphalt and the drainage pitches into the um, the tree islands inside the landscape and that actually contains the water and holds it so it can infiltrate into the ground and underneath the whole parking lot is an under drain system as well because the site sits it has very shallow topsoil we're sitting on top of bedrock then what isn't caught in those during a heavy storm event is engineered to come into this large bioswell is the term for this and it's graded to where it will catch like a medium storm event and then during an extremely heavy storm event it flows down into this lower basin and then back into the stormwater system and what this does is it cleans the water as it goes through the sand and the soil and it reduces the amount of stormwater going back into the system because the uh, plants also uptake quite a bit and some is held back in the soils. The employees here tell me that they were shocked when they moved in to discover that they had a butterfly garden <laughs> in their parking lot and how much they enjoyed that. So I see purple cone flowers and I see black eyed Susans. I know that you just don't go in and plop down some soil and put these plants in. What kind of special considerations and mixes did you need to use? This is called a biosoil mix and you have it, say at least one to two feet depth on it. It's underneath all this mulch and rock. And the idea with that is you want it to be very permeable soil. So typically the mix is 10% native soil, 30% rich composted material, and 60% a uh, coarse grain sand so that the water can really infiltrate through the soil and be cleaned up by all of those materials. But I tried to choose a lot of plants that would have a lot of blooming and color and make it really appealing, and then give it structure with these evergreen native um, ink berries to sort of hold that through the winter. And so we've got hibiscus, inkberry, 
button bush, butterfly bush, hypericum, iris, just a whole variety of uh, really nice things. It's been, the whole project has been very well received and much more successful than we ever thought it would be. Now, the, uh, the design of all of this structure works so that the stormwater will percolate down into the ground. And I noticed that your tree islands here don't have curbs at all. That's so the water can just sheet flow straight over into them. As sort of a follow up on what have we learned from this, because it was such a pioneer project. If I had to do this again, I would put a small curb around the ends because people are driving their cars over them and busting uh, the irrigation heads. This is irrigated and that's mostly because of the codes right now. Now, this is not the only parking lot like this. I gather the rest of the complex will include this type of development as well? Right, the two parking lots in front and to the side of the children's theater on this campus are both low impact design and they were installed last uh, fall. So they're about one year into maturity. This installation was done by Dwight Beard with Beard Landscaping, and it's been here about four years now, so it's just now really beginning to get well established. Well, we see here as you walk out the door of the building, walk around the parking lot, certainly a beautiful garden. It gives a nice soft appearance to the parking lot out here and is very welcoming. I know that a lot of buildings are going to be going in this direction as we move forward with this type of low impact design and other green design in our city. For more information on rain gardens and low impact design, visit our website at volunteergardener.org.